All right, cool. Uh, this is Szymanski Arts. Um, what I'm going to be showing you today is how I put together a hand-built Boba Fett EE3 carbine blaster rifle. Basically a Star Wars gun. This guy right here. Okay? So, anyways, this is a mixed media piece. Um, there's some PVC piping, some drywall even, and um, some ceramics. Um, I tried to make this video as concise and short as I possibly could, but I warn you it is fairly lengthy. Um, let me actually show you the piece itself right now. Um, this is what I'm going to be showing you how I put together. Okay. Let me flip her around. The two sides are a little bit different. Okay. But like I said, I'll be showing you how I um, made stuff like the stock, um, these little decorative pieces that are on the stock, um, the handle even, um, the muzzle, the scope and various other items on the gun. But anyways, um, having said that, um, let's get cracking. Okay, thanks. Ugh. All right, the um, the first thing I'm gonna <clears throat> approach and or work on with the um, Boba Fett rifle is um, the barrel part. Um, right right here, this little section right here. Okay, this extends out farther than. Um, the regular barrel it, it is a little bit more narrow so what I did was um, I got a PCP pipe and then a smaller plumbing pipe and this basically is gonna fit inside here like that so that's gonna create the um, difference in the um, width um, but first I gotta cut this part off right here this little knob um, and all right. Well, that cut went went pretty good. Now, once I got that going, cut pretty nice, pretty smooth, straight. Anyhow, so now it fits inside there. Now, the next step is um, probably gonna cut the barrel here. Um, it's gotta fit like so. Now this is obviously way too long, so I'm gonna have to cut that down. Um, anyhow, I'm gonna see if I can do that right right now next step all right cool okay I kind of figured out where I want to cut it so I just took my little marker make a little mark and cross our fingers and hope that's right all right cool all release the clamps Okay, the next step is um, making the uh, the barrel fit on the actual gun itself. Um, I'll have to show you a close-up on that. Um, but uh, basically, just because I have it like this, um, it's not... This actually has to fit over this part. So I'm going to have to make a cut, like right... Let me think here. A cut right in here, so this slides over this part here okay that way it'll give me a give me a snug fit tight fit um, so it doesn't joss around as much while I'm working it um, anyhow uh, I'll show so you here it is basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna spin it and then I'm gonna center it the best I can and I'm gonna make some some marks right here that way it'll slide over over this part here Okay, I don't want to go too deep here this way because I don't want it to slide too far. I want it to be able to stop at a certain point. Um, but anyhow, let me go make my marks. All right, it's about where my cut's got to be. So I'm going to hand do it right now with this guy at an angle like this okay and then just kind of slowly work it like that alright looks like I got the gun to go in okay but it stops right here so what I'm gonna do is make a cut up here so this can slide um, over this spot here so it's almost there because I want it to be able to like 
still latch, which looks like it's going to work. Victory. Oops. Victory at last. But, uh, anyhow, there we go. All right. Well, here it is thus far. Um, this can extend. Anyhow, um, right now it's kind of hard to tell if it's going to be proportionally correct. Um, the, you know, without the scope, it's kind of hard to see. Anyways, if it's too long, I can always cut this here anyways. Um, but, uh, we'll see. All right. There we go. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Just got to keep plugging away. All right, now what I'm going to work on now is trying to get the proportions right on the gun itself. Like, I don't want the barrel being too long, like I just said. So basically what I'm going to be doing is making marks um, along the thing here where the scope's going to go and, um, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, use my reference material, obviously, you know, and I'll just map out all these points. All right, cool. Okay, I just got done trimming it. Um, it looks like it's going to be a bit better. Um, yeah. So, okay, cool. Move on to the next phase. Oh, and like I said, here's the markings on the one side. But anyhow, that's it. Okay, here I'm going to line up my scope. I'm basically just going to look at the points on the um, photograph, picture, what have you. Um, see where it's going to be and then cut it accordingly. That's it. Alright, I have to document everything, so here's me cutting the uh, scope. Alright. Piece of cake. Alright, cool. Moving along. Um, now I'm going to be showing you how I do uh, this guy. Okay, this is basically a metal piece that goes on the um, handle area of the gun. Um, what a lot of people may not realize is the Bubba Fett gun actually has two different sides on the um, handle area. Um, basically the first uh, one side is just a regular old handle piece. But then you flip the gun over and you'll get this metal piece. I think it's called a D-ring. This is what I'm going to be working on right now. Um, I'll be using a coat hanger and a ceramic clay that you can find at your local um, hobby store. Um, it's basically 275 um, temperature at 15 minutes per quarter inch in your oven, just in your oven, nothing special. Um, there's two types of this clay I'm going to be using in this project. Um, this one is the, the basic clay I usually use all the time and then I'll be using another version of that clay later on. Um, but anyways, it's basically this stuff here. Um, all right, I'm basically just taking a screwdriver and we'll just work it, pop it off. There we go. That's the one side. The other side, whoop, just pops right off. So now I'm left with with the uh, the framework, which is still metal, so it should attach just beautifully on that. Okay, cool. All right, what I'm going to do next is basically I'm just going to take the gun. Um, like I said earlier, I'm going to extend the bear, or the handle a little bit down farther. So I'm basically just going to sketch out um, this piece here over on this uh, cardboard and then I'll cut it okay. out and use it as I'm a template. I'm going to trace the front part of the handle. Okay. This way it gives me an idea of how how much longer right here I want to make the handle. Okay. And there we go there. And that should should make the handle a bit bigger, etc, cetera, etc cetera, to where I want it. Okay, and then we basically just extend this out, and that's roughly about right here. Um, anyhow, that's how that goes. All right, uh, there it is. There's the... Uh, coat hanger bent. I can tell you, it's a little more work than it uh, seems. Um, basically what I want to do, I don't want this piece to be breakable or anything like that, so I want it to be one solid um, piece for the most part. So I bent um, the um, 
bottom part and looped it and then brought it all the way around so that it stops at one spot. That way it's, it's a little more durable. I'm probably going to take some um, secondary wire and probably wrap it around it to give it more rigidity. Um, yeah, I made up that word. Um, so that it's a little more stable. Anyways, all right, I'll show you that in a second. All right, now let me explain a little bit about what's going to happen here. Um, this obviously is going to overlay here, okay? This opening here is so that I can transfix holes to go through this piece and screw onto the um, toy gun. Anyhow, and a sculpey clay goes over all of this right here. Okay, that's it in a nutshell. All right, so I just start applying this stuff. All right, I'll show you in a little bit how it comes out. Yes. Pretty close. I'm going to stick this in the oven, uh, 275 for about, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes maybe. Um, anyhow, the well, last thing I showed you was uh, this piece. Right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually work on stock. Um, I'm going to use it originally or initially right now I'm going to use a drywall um, just to make out the outline and um, see what happens. I'm not quite sure I'm going to uh, finish it off, but... Um, that may just be the plan and then just um, cut it out, um, fix it onto this thing and then I might um, do um, joint compound um, overlaying on top of it and then being and then sanding that down. Um, I've done that before. Alright, uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to gauge the, um, the stock. I was thinking, I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's way too small. So I just um, took um, a ruler uh, that I just sawed and just uh, taped it onto the the little like that connector piece, I don't know what you call it. Anyways, so I'm just lining up with my the gun, um, roughly putting it in place, and then I'm gonna like pull it up to my shoulder and see if that works. I sh okay, it looks like it looks like it's just about right. Um, As I look at my reference material, grab my. Uh, pencil, or the heck that is. All right, whatever. So we're basically going to be doing this side today, or I mean right now, and then this side in a little bit. All right, I got myself a drywall piece that was uh, laying around the house um, from past projects, but um, uh, anyhow, we're going to do all this stuff right here. So... Just popped it out. All right. Took me quite a few cuts to get it uh, down to size, so I'm just gonna eyeball this guy um, like this. Looks like looks like it's about right. Um, yeah. Anyways, now I'm gonna go cut the other piece and um, go from there. All right. But since I'm using uh, drywall, um, as tough as it can be after I like um, glue the two pieces together and stuff, it's still susceptible to being snapped. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of wood and I'm just going to cut in a groove in the drywall. And this thing will set right in there and give it a nice solid um, piece to work with. All right? Alright, this part of the 
project is kind of redundant, kind of like, I don't even know why I'm even showing it. This is so irritating. This is the drywall, the stock. I'm just kind of like cutting into it, the thing. Anyways, I'm freaking using an X-Acto knife to do it. This is, all right, I just got done with the second piece, scoring that out. Um, the tricky thing about um, the drywall is you've got to be very careful because um, I didn't want to go too deep because I'd make this piece too thin and it'd just snap real easy. And I already lost the um, bottom part of um, the one um, piece. Anyways, so um, you're welcome for not um, showing you all the scoring part that I did with that. It's quite monotonous. Uh, anyhow, so the first piece... Or the metal or the wood piece fits right up all in there, okay. Then I lay the other piece on top of it, okay. As you can see, it's it's a pretty decent fit, okay. What I'm gonna be doing right now is going to show you how I um, put the stock together. I'm just gonna glue it together, um, screw it down, and then put some bondo on it, or not some bondo. Glue's all hardened. I probably don't really need to do this, but I'm gonna anyways. I'll just screw these guys in, and we'll be all right. All right, uh, what I'm gonna do next, I have my um, stock uh, drilled, or screwed in, um, glued, and uh, ready to get fitted. But first, I have to um, go over this with um, some uh, joint compound, um, like I was talking earlier, and that's what I'm doing. Okay, this is the first application. I gotta wait for this thing to dry, and uh, I gotta figure out where to stick it. Anyhow, and then I'll do the bottom part and so on and so forth. All right, cool. Okay, the stack um, dried overnight, so I'm gonna go over it again another time, and I'm gonna hit this end of the um, piece that I missed because I uh, can't do the whole thing at once. All right, cool. Let's see how it looks. Anyways, then I'll sand it down and it'll look pretty nice. Cool. I'm gonna fill in the gap here on the two sides. Oops. So it'll give it a tighter fit. Um, I'm going to now pop this off because it's not really connected. I don't have it screwed in or anything. So I'm just going to go along the edge with, with my X-Acto just to kind of cut this top edge here. And then that should just pop out for me real nice like or it should uh, here we go pops right out all right what I'm gonna be doing now is the um, handle piece okay same thing I'm gonna take the piece that I made the gun and I'm just gonna basically pencil it out on here right ever so carefully cut this out I'm gonna take some more wire bend it in the shape and then add the uh, sculpey anyhow uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. There it is. 
Now you start adding the clay. Alright, cool. Frustrating part. I have to uh, reconfigure the um, the thing I did. I had to redo this whole part over here to make it angle correctly. Um, I didn't quite have it right. Um, anyhow, so I'm just redoing all this. Now I'm gonna have to like whatever. Anyways, star piece okay. right here that goes on the handle. Whoop handle. So I'm basically just gonna glue that into place and then I'm going to sand it down because it's a little too protrudes a little bit too much um, so basically I'm going to be doing the uh, the holes in that second barrel um, I'm going to try and go by this uh, photograph um, it looks like there's four there and there's that would make it possibly eight just because you have to go around the barrel but you can't find any reference material where it does the complete barrel um, there's also this version, which is just someone's um, take on it. Um, this one's pretty good, too. But uh, anyhow, I'm going to take a look at my thing, measure it out, and see what we do. All right. All right, first what I'm going to do is actually mark where I think the uh, barrel stops, starts, whatever. Yeah. All right, I made my marks, my guesstimates on where it's going to be. Basically, I'm going to... Put on the clamps okay. and I'm going to show you how I uh, got these holes in here. I have to redo some more, but uh, this is basically what I did. Basically just drill a hole, actually two holes in one piece and then you kind of like go will swiggle this thing back and forth to get it to cut in the middle. It's kind of a pain in the neck, but whatever. Do what you got to do, huh? Alright, try and measure this so it's right with this one here. Alright, now as you can see the the thing isn't perfectly a round or a cylinder shape. So what I basically I just take a X-Acto knife and I just kind of slowly work the edges or the spots that are not quite right. Okay, that sharpens up the um, angles or the you know the way it looks, et cetera, et cetera. So anyhow, I'll be doing that for a couple minutes. Okay, now the easy part. I was looking on it, and uh, while well, there's one, two, three, four, there's six cylinder shaped um, holes, but on the one side, there's actually holes, just circle holes, piece of cake. All I gotta do is drill them, no problem. Um, just change my drill bit to get the different sizes, and we're golden. Alright, cool. Right now, I have to ta paint the inside of the barrel black um, so that it shows through right. Even though I paint the outside, I still need the inside a right color. So basically, I just took one of these spongy, spongy things that uh, you can get the you know craft shop whatever, taped it onto a, a dowel,y and I'm just gonna dip it in paint, kind of go in like this, and that's how I'll get that done. Cool. All right. As you can see, with uh, just one layer, the holes actually stand out better. You can actually see them better. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna be uh, priming 
this guy, the barrel, um, priming it white, and then I'm going to go over with uh, silver. Anyways, um, in order to get the, um, the primer not to go inside these holes, I'm putting um, some index cards in there. I don't know. Probably work. I'm just guessing. I'm just, you know, figuring things out as I go. Anyhow, um, I'm going to take this outside, do it outside, stick it on a pole. That way I can go around it evenly. And that's it. I just got done going to the um, hardware store across the street. Picked me up some nuts and bolts. Um, I'm going to transfix this guy onto here. And then we're going to, after that, we're going to double check my proportions. Um, and that's what we'll be doing. All right. Okay. Here it is. And like before, I uh, lined up these holes here with um, this piece so it lines up right. Anyhow, so um, I just uh, insert it in there, and we'll be good to go. All right, now that I got this piece screwed in here, um, I can play around uh, with not having to worry about it fall off so I can check my proportions again like my stock I uh, went ahead and checked a little bit ago and it looks like it's a little too long so I'm gonna cut that cut that down some more um, and then eventually this guy this handle piece will fit right up on here okay the trick I was having was um, making sure that it lines up lines up with the other piece here that was a pain anyhow um, that's that cool. now I'm gonna uh, move on to uh, the brackets uh, these guys alright didn't quite explain these brackets too well um, basically what they are is they what that's what goes on um, fastens the um, scope onto the barrel it's basically these right here um, basically I'm just gonna um, take some my wire wrap it around here make sure the circles correct and then I'm just gonna make it out of Sculpey. Wrap this and then we'll just twist it or try to twist it. Whoops, going the wrong way. There we go. Right. Okay, here they are. Alright. Now all I have to do Put the clay on there and we'll be all right and then here's the there's the scope looks pretty rough I know anyhow all right cool All right, I was looking at my newly uh, baked uh, scope um, attachment. Uh, it's it's too high, so I'm just go ahead and breaking them and making them shorter. All right, cool. All right, what I'm doing here is I'm actually cutting away at the sides because the sides seem too thick, so I'm just kind of shaving it down. Uh, this morning I. Was reworking these guys. I had to trim this down. I did. I'm gonna right, just purchase some uh, these rings, copper rings, for the clamps for the uh, scope. Um, they're kind of they're, they're bent, so I'm just gonna bend them with my drivers or drivers, corkscrews, wrenches, whatever. Anyways. Just bend them into it's, place. Um, and use what these bill. actual um, little clamps are for is what holds the uh, scope into place. Um, if you see right there, all up here, 
So I just had to bend them, bend them down, and then they just fit on the scope like that. All right, that's all. All right, cool. All right, what I'm doing is um, right here. I actually took a, a drill bit and went right through this soft, the soft um, unbaked clay. Um, all right, I got all the pieces tentatively. I repeat, tentatively together. All right. The toy gun in there. I'm thinking eyeballing it. Should I make it the gap here smaller? Um, maybe. Anyhow, um, these are actually not attached, <laughs> but I had to take a look. All right, what I'm doing here is um, the clamp. This is what rests the um, the scope on. If I just glue this flat on here, it's not going to be that stable. So right now I'm making a um, a cut across this way. I'm going to insert a pin. That way I can like actually like bolt it down or like make it um, more stable. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking these pieces here, clamping them down, taking a saw, making a groove in the clay, and then I'm going to insert some a uh, piece of wiring across. So I have something to uh, push down on to keep it more uh, stability. All right, made my grooves. Um, put my metal pieces um, inside and then put a layer of clay on top of each. That way it anchors, anchors these guys in. Uh, bake this and uh, we'll be ready to mount it. Alright, this kind of worked in more, more, more like a champ. Um, basically, clamps worked in just right. I actually had to drill holes into the copper so these screws would fit but anyways that's that all right now you can see the glue is starting to harden and expand this thing is solid so I'll basically just take a a razor blade and cut cut all this stuff down, and then we'll we'll place a bracket over these these uh, not these uh, metal extensions right here and right here. Oops, let me see that. <coughs> all right, I'm gonna uh, redo starting to make these brackets here. Um. Basically, I did one, and uh, it gets fixable, but it's not quite right. I need to do it the right way. I kind of got impatient um, the other day. Um, uh, I'm going to show you how I do it the uh, right way, best way. Um, okay, I've done throwing in the towel on doing these other techniques with this. I'm just going to go ahead and sculpt this piece on there. Um, what I was trying was just not working out. Um, so... That's what I'm doing. So you just slowly work it. Cool. Now that I have this set in here with the Gorilla Glue, I can now go around it. Anyhow, I'll come back. All right. Here they are coming together. They're not not quite done yet, but um, I need to take a break. So. All right. <laughs> now it's time to do the clamps that come up on the sides. All right. All right. Back to the drawing board. Um, I am redoing the brackets that go on the side of um, the scope thing here. These guys right here. Just put some clay on there, folding, shaping it, etc, etc. They come right off. They're real soft. And then I went to the hardware store and bought me some pins like this. And then they'll just slide right in there. Come to the other side and it'll fasten in like that. All right, cool. Well, I'm gonna have to redo the scope because this stuff just doesn't, not quite long enough. Um, so right now I'm just marking uh, where I need these things to be. The original I made too short, so I wasn't able to create um, this gap between these uh, brackets. Um, 
So now I'm just going to make another one. Um, and I'm going to mark these um, where I need these to be. So when I apply the clay, I have them in the right spot. All right. Cool. All right. <clears throat> now I started this one off. I actually took tape and uh, went backwards. Um, the actual sticky parts on the outside, and then I wrapped it with some um, wiring. That way, it keeps it rigid. Usually, I use the foil method, but for some reason, this this popped in my head to come up with to do. So, so it'll slide off and on. Uh, when I need to bake it, I can just slide it off. Anyways, that's that. And then Alright, now I'm going to be creating this uh, ring right here. It's got serrations on it or whatever. Um, anyhow, let's so take this guy and I'm just going to roll it. Okay, let's keep doing it. This helps to make it even. I'm going to start applying it. I'll just take a razor blade, cut it where they meet, take off the excess, boom. I'll probably, probably roll this, I think. Or try to. Kind of flattens it out. Alright, cool. Okay. We've got the circle here close enough. Um, <clears throat> now to create the ridges that go on the thing. Basically all I'm going to do is take a uh, razor blade, the blunt end, and I just press it every so many centimeters and just go all the way around. Alright, I'll show you a close up of what I'm doing. Basically, going like that simple as that. Oh, kind of messed those ones up. What I'm doing now is I'm sanding scope. Make sure certain things are correct. Okay, now I'm going to move on to um, uh, this section of the uh, gun. Um, just on this guy. This will basically make it look more like it's a gun, or it's going to look like it's coming along better. Um, I'm going to use some smaller wire and some foil. All right, cool. Oh, and the clay. Yeah, don't forget that. I'm going to wrap it along the head thing here. Just bend it down to make it shape. Oh. All right, just put this this guy on here. I'm gonna go bake it. Came out pretty good. <clears throat> All right, I had to um, cut the uh, trigger guard, 
and I'm because uh, it was too small. Um, so basically, what I'm doing is I'm making a little armature here, um, and then adding clay <coughs> and stuff. All right, we've got that all bent into shape. This piece here. I'm just gonna add clay to this, and hopefully, this little groove it'll just fit right up, fit right up in there. And there we go. Alright, here we go. This is a royal pain. <laughs> Oops. Zoom out. This is what it entails. Alright, so as I'm adding the clay to the armature, I kind of fit it onto the gun, make sure that I got everything, you know, worked in right. Okay. There we go. I basically baked this already. This is hard, hardened now, so it just kind of f fits off and on. This way I can use this as a stabilizing piece as I um, um, build the actual um, completed part. Here I start adding clay to the um, trigger ring, the top part. Um, there we go, like that. Um, this piece will still come off. Um, anyways, this is just trigger ring to... protector on the uh, gun and the clay. This gun just slips on like that. Now you just gotta bake it and uh, sharpen up a little bit on the edges, and uh, we'll be good to go on that. All right, cool. What I'm doing right now is doing some basic sanding. Um, this is the trigger guard. Um, anyhow, when you do these things, they, they don't come out exactly perfect, so you have to kind of sharpen them up with uh, your uh, sandpaper. They're close, but it's got to be right, or at least close to it. This ain't going to be an exact spec. But you'll be able to tell it's it's a handmade piece, but it'll look it'll still look pretty sharp. All, All right, right so what cool. I have to do now. So I have the gun. I have my barrel. When I put it on here, I need this to stay in place. Okay, it's a big giant gap. It just comes right off. There's different ways I'm, I can do this. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a a piece like this with the clay fits over the barrel and then as I slide it into um, this barrel it'll give it a tighter fit and I'll be able to like glue it into place um, with some epoxy or um, some uh, high powered glue but anyhow that's what I'm going to be doing right here. I use All right, here's what's going to happen with the um, barrel getting attached to the toy gun I made an anchor point here, which is just clay glued onto the barrel. It's not going anywhere. And um, this wire system is going to go into the, this barrel. I drilled two holes right here where it's gonna, they're going to come out, and I'm going to twist, and that will give it a nice anchor out front. Right now, as, as it stands, um, this piece here holds it in place pretty good but I wanted one additional spot um, to anchor it. See so it goes right up into the thing I twist up here and I'll just plug it with a little um, clay and make it look like it's just a little part of the gun and we'll be set. All right, cool. Alright, with a little work, um, it's in there. You can see it's, it's a lot more stable. I can still pull that, still pull the trigger, and we're good to go. Alright, i got to fill in all these holes, and these little gaps in here. Basically, I'm going to be using joint compound. I'm going to fill in that, too. Alright. Here's a crash course on how I made these side pieces 
of the gun that go on the top of the um, the barrel on the little attachment. Anyways, um, I did a couple versions of it. Um, the original one was too large, then I went smaller, and then I went even smaller. But anyways, this is how you kind of do it. Um, I basically just took a piece of clay, rolled it in a ball, flattened it like this with a putty knife, okay? And then I just kind of like went on each side and pressed down. That creates my uh, squared look, okay? And then to get the holes, I initially used a um, pencil. Um, but like I said, it was a little bit too large, so I ended up using a, um, just a little screw, screw head. So you just basically just press into it, like so. Kind of show you real quickly. Gives you the impression right there. Uh, or to make them deeper, um, I used a, uh, a drill bit and just drilled into it. Um, and that's how I did that. And then it came up with, with this guy. All right. Um, in order to create this, the, the backside ridge here, piece of cake, again, just roll, roll your clay, flatten it out, take your little straight edge blade, just cut right into it, like so, boom, then you've got your square piece, that's that. Um, bake that in the oven, about 275 for about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, um, you're good to go. Um, glue them together and um, that's it. Um, let me think here. Is there anything else I needed to add? Not really. Alright, what I'm doing now is creating pins um, on the sides of these clamps for these guys to fit on. There's a close up. I just drilled a couple holes. I'm going to glue these into place. I'm going to take a drill into this guy. That way it'll have an anchor point as opposed to just um, glue, glue to put it on. <coughs> All right, now I'm going to show how I do this uh, little piece right here. There's actually two pieces. There's like a circle piece underneath it, and there's the long piece there. Anyhow, that's it for that. All right, cool. All right, here's my setup to do uh, <clears throat> these things. Um, they're too large to go on um, my version. Whoop. So there's too large, so I've got to make smaller ones. Keep flattening um, them, like I said. I get the right size. I'll take a razor blade. That's so that I can get it off the glass. Alright, so we're just going to take it like that. Looks like she's getting pretty close. Maybe one more flattening. We'll be good to go. All right, looks like these things will work out pretty good. Um, it won't be, uh, some of the proportions won't be exactly correct, right, um, to scale um, or to spec, um, but I'm gonna get it as close as I can get it. Um, certain certain spots I'll let go, um, just because they don't they don't bother, as, bother me as much as others. Other spots I'd like to have at least as close to spot on as possible. Um, Alright, quickly, I had to make another one of these. This one's too big. Um, basically, here's the new piece. What I'm doing right now is I'm creating pins in the um, clay um, so that they fit. It gives a better snug fit in these, um, these holes right here along the ridge. So when it lines up, we'll be good. Alright, cool. Alright, right now I'm going to be doing these guys. These are some decorative pieces that go on the stock. Um, uh, another photo, just a closer up part. Anyhow, I've made some uh, templates just out of paper, index card paper. One's <clears throat> all right. This is me just sculpting this decorative piece that goes on the side of the stock. It's actually shown right here in the picture. These guys here. Anyhow working on this one right now. I just did this one. So basically all you do is you just kind of use your utensil and just kind of work it in. Anyhow, 
I'll spare you, spare you the monotony of watching me do this, but that's basically what you do. You're just kind of working at it slowly. All right. Okay, what I didn't show you yet is I had sculpted one of these, but I wasn't about to do all this detail four more times. That's just too much time. So I ended up making a template with it. So I basically took the hardened piece, took some soft clay, embedded it into the piece there, and it gave me a negative. Okay? Then I stuck this in the oven, baked it. That's why it's hard right now. Okay? It doesn't bend. Anyhow, and then I just kept taking the one flat pieces that I had, and you just take soft clay, put it inside there, and you just kind of press down and it makes a print. Uh, one key note is you have to line this with some um, alcohol otherwise the clay will just stick to it and you won't be able to get it out. But I end up doing that. <coughs> Alright, now I'm starting on the little square guy. This guy here. So, you just add your clay and then just start working it. That's all you do. Anyhow, whatever. Okay, the inside part's done. I'm probably going to bake it, and then I'm going to have to do the outside ridge part. The part that's red in this picture. But you can see the inside's all right. Baked, all right. I just have to cool. sand it down. You know, make these edges a little bit better. Um, and and uh, center that as best I can. Basically the uh, knob on top of the scope I have to do and then um, this bolt action on the bottom of the uh, gun. Those will be pretty simple. Just doing some clay and then um, gluing them into place. That's about it. Alright, in order to put these little screw doohickeys in here, I'm going to have to drill um, some little holes here so they fit inside. Glue will hold it, but it'll, they'll still be susceptible to being snapped. So, um, don't really recommend it doing it like this, but you know, do what you gotta do. So, Um, what I was working on today was this um, bridge bridge pieces that are on the front and back that connect the two brackets to make them kind of like one bracket. Um, I'm getting kind of anal about that particular detail of the gun. Um, I don't really know if you can, can, can see close enough. Um, right here, they actually connect the two brackets. You see it closer on the one, this part up here. Anyhow. That's what I did with some clay, baked it, um, glued it into sp glued it into into place, and then um, spaced it with the brackets. Um, let me do a close up in that for you. Okay, <clears throat> that's what uh, that piece is right there, and then I'll sand it down, and then when I do the final paint job, it'll it'll look together as one one piece. Um, All right, cool. Um, now that we have everything made, it's time to move on to the uh, painting stage. Um, this part is not as detailed as I was hoping it was going to be, basically because I ran into some stumbling blocks as I was going along with it, and I had to redo a bunch of um, spots. Um, so if you notice that the um, the final product is a little different than um, what I show in this next section, that's basically because I was getting a little f uh, frustrated, a little fatigued out at that point of the project. So I just went ahead and shut the cameras off and then just focused on um, getting those uh, areas correct. Um, so anyways, um, with that, I think that's all I needed to say in this part. Um, yeah, all right. So let's get started. Cool. Alright, 
And there you go. Spray painted these all white, and uh, now I gotta go spray paint them black. Oops. All right, cool. Uh, thanks for checking that out. Um, that was just one way of a million different ways you could probably create this piece. Um, but for me, that was the easiest, quickest way I could do it. Um, thanks for checking this out, for being as long as it is. I tried to make it as detailed yet as concise as I could. Um, I did leave a couple items out um, that I may uh, address in a uh, third video. Um, two of those small little things were... Um, um, Basically, the, the, the muzzle piece, I actually redid that piece. Um, the one that's shown in the video is actually the first version. Um, the second version, I made a little bit, um, I made the holes a little bit larger, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the other, the other, the other note um, piece that I missed was um, how I attached um, the handle. There, I actually put a little piece in there for it to screw into. Um, that, that part of the video was kind of lengthy, so I had to kind of cut that. Um, but anyways... All in all, I think it came out pretty good. Um, uh, most of the proportions are fairly fairly spot on. But uh, anyways, um, that's all I think I have to say. And um, again, one last time, thanks for um, checking it out. All right? Thanks.